Hey folks, welcome back. My name is Krishna. If you're new to the channel, welcome. In this video, we're going to take a look at how you can use halftones, those are those little dots, um, within your own illustration work. And I'll share with you some of the techniques that I use when I'm working with halftones. So I use True Grit Texture Supply Debaser uh, Pattern Halftones. And these are available in both Procreate as well as Photoshop. Uh, they're not available in Krita, which is another reason that's keeping me from completely moving into Krita because I need certain tools that are only available within Photoshop. So if we click on our patterns panel, you can see that TrueGrit Texture Supply gives you these color halftones that mimic old school printing colors. So if you're thinking about old comic books or old newspapers, get those little dots when you're looking at colored images. Um, that's what these halftones represent. And it's very easy to use these halftones within your own work. So I'm gonna go ahead and start off by uh, just starting off with uh, using the halftones on this main figure. I'll have you guess who this person is in the comments below. Uh, <clears throat> see if my rendition is actually uh, working well or not. Um, so I'm using the magic wand tool here and I'm simply making a selection for all the skin tone and the magic wand tool just makes it much, much faster to make a more accurate selection. I've talked about this tool at length in a lot of my previous videos. So I uh, don't want to belabor that point, but if you haven't used the magic wand tool, what it does is it allows you to select open areas that are with, uh, within an enclosed space for the purposes of um, you know, making your color choices. So I'm just adding the shift key uh, and I'm swapping between the magic wand tool and the lasso tool, as you can see here, to make all of my selections. Let me just get the nose all right. And now I'm gonna go to the half tones itself and I'll pick a skin tone. And at the most basic level, what's happening is those patterns are now being applied into that selection, which is pretty cool. Uh, and you can see that because I have a new layer underneath this figure, um, you can see that the patterns are actually showing up within a mask. So this white area here in the thumbnail represents that part of the half tones that are visible. The black represents the parts where the half tones are not showing up. So this can be actually very helpful because now if I have certain areas that um, still need to be colored, I can use my brush tool and with the white color, I can come back in as long as I'm selecting that thumbnail for the mask, I can come back in and simply uh, fill in those gaps with color. And I usually do this as a last touch here. I might have colored the eyebrows, but that's okay. Um, get this little spot over here too. So that's using the half tones in a very basic way. So I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to now select a different color half tone. So again, repeating those steps, use the magic wand tool. And the magic wand tool, you want to make sure that you have a fully enclosed area. You can see that the selection that I've just made here actually spills out to other parts of the composition. Um, and that's because I have a gap. I don't have a fully enclosed area on the hair. So what I typically do is I can, I can either fill the gap in with my inks, or if I want to keep that gap for whatever reason, maybe aesthetic reasons, I can just use the lasso tool with the shift key to add to my magic wand tool selection. So here I've got the hair. Uh, let me get the eyebrows. And let me get the mustache. I'll come back to my half tones. I'll try to find something that's gonna be a, a decent equivalent maybe. There we go. And then for those other areas, 
I can come back in with my brush. So I typically use the brush for more detailed work here. You know, just those little areas that I might have missed for whatever reason, I can come back in and clean them up. Now, in my aesthetic, I don't just use half tones by themselves. I will also think about lighting. I will also think about using standard colors that don't have dots. That's just the aesthetic that I've fallen into. I like that. Um, there's no right or wrong way. It's just whatever works for you. So, for example, um, if I want to have, say, you know, there's some kind of an explosion coming out of this character's ear, maybe there's going to be, you know, uh, some, maybe the explosion's yellow, and I haven't quite decided that because I'm kind of doing this impromptu, but I can come back in with an accent. I can use yellow on a separate layer to suggest that that light from the explosion is having some kind of an impact. And I'm going to make that a little bit brighter to make it more visible because I want to make sure that whatever colors I add, I'm giving enough contrast. In my last video, I talked about how you can quickly turn your color uh, canvas into grayscale for the purposes of checking your values. Values are those grayscale representations of your hues. So in this case, there is a little bit of contrast. I can see it here. I can maybe bring a little bit of white into that mix. And uh, I kind of come in, uh, I'll bring in some of that white over here around the eyes. It's not going to be as prominent over here. But there we go. So I've added uh, an accent. An accent is basically when you've got, I, I like to think of accents as those lighting situations where it's, you know, you might have your room lighting and then you have a light from a glowing orb or something like that. The light from that glowing orb is what I would call light that's going to create the accent color on, on the form. So I have that taken care of here. I uh, will make a new layer. I'm always very generous about using multiple layers. There's nothing wrong with it. Layers are free. Uh, and uh, typically when I work, it's anywhere between, you know, 20 to, you know, I think about 170 or 200 layers at the most. Um, and so it's, you know, never really run into any issues with that. So I've added, um, you know, um, those elements in. Now let me see uh, what else I can do here. So I've got a lot of areas that are white. And I could go back in with the magic wand tool and select, say, the whiteness of the eyes and the teeth. But I'm feeling lazy. So underneath the existing layers that I've already colored, I will use the lasso tool. And I'll simply select around the entire eye. I'll hold the shift key to select the other eye. And then I'll do the same thing around the teeth. And then making sure that white is filled, option delete or alt backspace. And that fills that color in for me. So that way I don't have to go into every single area. And um, this saves me a lot of time. And nobody's going to see that white except for where it's visible, which is on the eyes. Okay, so I've got that. Let's come back in and let's add some um, shaded areas. And I have a, a couple of different approaches here. Um, what I like to do is wherever I've got the cross hatching in place, I'll start off with that lasso tool and just make some selections around those cross hatched areas. doesn't have to be super duper precise, just has to look believable. And I'll pick a darker, somewhat saturated color that will kind of give us a little bit of a pop there. So it, the skin tone for this character is, you know, uh, peach. I'm picking kind of a darker value along that same range. And again, coming back in with my brush tool. Forgot the spot over here, maybe under the chin, and over here underneath the neck. So now we have a little bit more definition of the form, which I think actually works pretty well. 
Uh, and I can now, let's get that the hair is kind of looking somewhat uniform. So I'll pick a, I guess a darker version of yellow. And again, I'm going to pop that onto its own layer. And I'm always adding colors on a layer underneath the ink layer. And that allows those inks to be preserved. I don't have to worry about the color eroding the inks. If you happen to color on the same layer of your inks, you may have already noticed that the, uh, the inks start to degrade. They start to break apart because the color is starting to overlap certain areas of the inks. So um, this to me seems to be the best way to protect against that. And plus it allows me to reuse the inks if I want to say, apply this character to a different composition. I always like to keep everything separate. And what I'll typically do is once I get all of the individual pieces of the color, and let me just go ahead and get the shirt because that'll finish out this particular character. So if you're new to working with these digital tools, you definitely want to learn about how to use selection tools, whether it's the magic wand tool or the lasso tool. Um, you want to get very comfortable with that. So I'm just filling those colors in. So I've got the shirt. There we go. And now what I'll do is I'll just take all of the associated colors and then I will hold down the shift key on the layers panel and I'll select all of the layers and I'll hit command G, which is basically going to group. And I'll just say colors. And that way the colors are resident on their own layer. This also becomes important too when you're trying to show your process stages. Let's say that you're sharing how you uh, went step by step through your coloring process. Um, this method allows you to easily organize the different parts of the uh, process into separate stages to where you can then organize them into a different file and show off how you've got from inks to colors to highlights, etc. So I think it's super important. So I'm gonna leave this video here. It's about 12 minutes long. I hope you found some value with this. I'll put a link to True Grip Texture Supply, their debaser halftone plugins. They do cost a little bit of money. They're not super expensive. There's always sales that are running on. Uh, and there are other halftone texture patterns uh, available from other vendors too. I just happen to use the ones from True Grit Texture Supply and they work pretty well for me. Oh, the last thing I'm going to say is that these textures, if you have a machine that is, uh, you know, maybe not as powerful, let's say that you have a machine that has a small memory footprint in terms of RAM, these textures do take up a considerable amount of RAM. Um, so my computer has 32 gigs of RAM. Each of these different folders here takes up about one gigabyte of memory. So you want to uh, be careful about loading all of those patterns in at once. Uh, some people will actually go ahead and um, remove the patterns after they're done and then reload them again as they need them. They might just reload, say, this particular folder uh, if they're only looking for the warmer uh, you know, half tones. So you have to really think about how you're planning on using these. Otherwise, you may want to make sure that the next computer that you pick has uh, more RAM to accommodate these textures. And again, you don't have to use any of these things, but I happen to really like that retro aesthetic. And I'm sure if several of you watching this video probably enjoy that as well. So um, there you go. Let me know if you found value in this video. Again, see if you can recognize some of the characters here, especially the one that I just colored. Let me know who you think that might be. And uh, I will talk to you in the next video. See ya.